Okay, I like this one because they've actually told you the law to apply. But that means if they're going to tell you the law to apply, you need to be so familiar with all those equation sheets and know all of those laws inside out so that you are ready to apply them. We're used to, in physics, explaining things with reference to equations or reference to physical laws. You need to show us you can do that too. So maybe you've had this uh, demonstrated to you, or maybe you've seen the tube with the magnet falling through it, both of which are demonstrations of Lenz's law. Um, so a coil of wire is placed around a lower end of an iron rod, coil is supplied with an alternating current. So this coil here, there's an AC across this. Uh, a thick aluminium ring is placed around the iron rod above the coil. The coil remains in the position shown. So an alternating current is induced in the aluminium ring. Explain uses Len using Lenz law why the aluminium ring remains in the position above. So actually told it's about Lenz's law. So let's go ahead and get that. This bit is Lenz's law, this negative sign. The rest is Faraday's law, which says that an EMF is proportional to a rate of change of flux linkage. Um, okay, so we can do this. This is essentially then a transformer, isn't it? Because you've got a coil here and you've got an aluminium ring here. So the EMF here is producing a alternating voltage, a change in voltage, it's inducing a current in the ring here. And we're told the current is reduced in the aluminium ring. So that's where our explanation needs to start for four marks. Okay, well, what about currents? Current, the current in the ring produces a magnetic field around the aluminium ring. So this, this aluminium ring has a current in it. So there's a mag field produced around that. So the current in the ring, a magnetic field. Okay, now because we're talking about Lenz's law, which relates EMFs to magnetic fields and then being opposite. Okay, we can say this magnetic field opposes the change in EMF. I could say current, I could say EMF here, so let's probably say EMF, which produced it. Okay, um, next thing to say, these fields repel. So the two fields interact and they repel. So the magnetic field in this core, this iron rod, repels the magnetic field of the aluminium ring. Okay. And now there's a last little bit here, which is actually, why does it remain in the position shown? Well, this is actually Newton's first law that you have to get in here, which is that this force, this repulsive force, this electro electromagnetic force, equal in size to the ring's weight. Hopefully you get that. The forces are balanced, okay? So it remains where it is, there's no acceleration. I think this is one where we just need to memorize our Lenz law explanation. So, current switch off, aluminum ring comes to rest on top of the coil. Supply to the coil is changed to a direct current switched on. A force F acts on the ring for 0.5 seconds, accelerating to final speed V. Ring then freely moves freely through a height of 30 centimeters. Just convert that straight to meters, why not? Mean diameter of the ring is this, convert that straight to meters. Or not. Um, okay, use conservation of energy to calculate the speed v of the ring after 0.05 seconds. So conservation of energy, we are given a height that it reaches here. Conservation of energy means kinetic into potential or potential into kinetic. In this case, our potential is a gravitational potential. So we don't need, quite need this bit yet. So M don't have, but they cancel. So GH equals half MV squared. We want to work out V. So 2GH is V squared. So V is root 2GH. So that's easy peasy. Root 2 times 9.81 times 0 0.3. 2.43 meters per second. Here's where actually all this bump, conservation of energy, just think about that law that you know. It's a much simpler question. We'd have no issue, but we've got all this quite distracting data at first. But then use the idea of impulse to calculate the magnitude of the mean force acting on the ring and hence the mean current in the ring. So here's a much harder bit where we need to use some of the other stuff. So an impulse is a force times a time. 
and that's equal to the change in momentum of whatever it is we're talking about. So the thing has gone from zero to this in a time 0 0.5, 0 0.5 seconds. In other words, it's mv minus mu. So in this case, mv, we have got mass, it's 0 0.019 times by 2.43, and it started with a speed of zero, so I don't actually need to work that out. 0 0.04617, that is uh, the same units as momentum. That's the impulse. So what's the force? Well, the force is that divided by the time. So I can just do divided by 0 0.05, 0 0.9234, 0 0.9234. Newtons. Okay, hope that makes sense for your first mark. I can write that in here. And hence the mean current I in the ring. Well, let's have a little think through what we what have we got to be able to equate to that. We know it's an electromagnetic force, and an electromagnetic force is a magnetic field strength times a current times a length. I don't have a length, do I? But I do have a diameter. And a circumference is pi d. So I can just stick that in here instead of length. And I want to finally work out the current, don't I? So I can just do a bit of rearranging as well. So I'll just quickly do that. So now I can just insert my numbers. That's going to give me current 0.9234 over... Converted that earlier, so I didn't make a mistake now. 191.4 amps. That does seem a little bit high, so I'm just going to check through and maybe keep those all to three six figs in this box here. Um, I'm just going to check through to make sure that I've done the right thing. And maybe put some of these through, but no, that is actually the answer there. Really good bit of calculation at the end there. I really like the fact that you could have answered some of that with just your AS knowledge. Okay, it's just, in fact, a lot of GCSE kids could do MGH, it was half MV squared stuff. And that means that you've got to be resilient enough to sometimes ignore data you've been given, or you think, hmm, I might need that, but for later on in this question.